This is Linked Data Engineering Lecture Number 6, Advanced Linked Database Applications. In this last part of the lecture, we will talk about exploratory search and recommender systems. So, what is data exploration? First, we want to clarify the question, what is retrieval versus exploration? So, what are the differences? Let's start with retrieval. For example, if you are looking for a specific book in a library, usually you are looking for something rather specific and you already know what you are looking for. So, for example, you are looking for a book which has been written by some author and it has a title and so on and so on, which means you have a unique identifier that you use, which is author and title, or you use some descriptive metadata. How do you look for the book in the library? So, usually you ask the friendly librarian or you are looking up the book in the library index with the data you have. So, for example, with the name of the author, which is Jules Verne, or with the name, the title of the book. And then usually you will find a, a card like that one, which indicates you where is the location of this book inside the library building and you can pick up your book and go away. The situation changes if you come back to the library and want, if you want to read something comparable, something else what interests you. So then you have the problem that you have to find books that are somehow on the same topic or that deal with a related topic. So you ask yourself questions, so how did the author or the topic develop over time? So what is it what I'm looking for now? What would I like to read? What would you recommend me? And then either you get an explicit recommendation from again the friendly librarian or you have to do your own exploration in the library. And this of course is a much more difficult process. But in the end you might find some interesting books, either they are from the same author or they deal with the same subject or you might even find a film like Apollo 18 here or something like that. This process is called exploratory search. And the interesting thing is in your old library, of course, traditional libraries, they enable exploratory search because they are using shelves. And unless you are not in the magazine down somewhere in the cellar or uh, in, in the depths of your library where only things which are not available for the public are collected, if you are in the public side of the library, usually things that are ordered in the shelf, they are ordered via some, let's say, descriptive or content-based categorical system, which means, for example, fantasy stories or science fiction novels like the one of Jules Verne, they are standing together in one shelf and you can explore the shelf and look for things which are similar or related to your original work and you can explore the content to find the thing you were looking for, although you are not really knowing what you are looking for in specific. And of course, the librarian is always there and he or she can give you intelligent recommendations. And what we want to do, we want to replicate exactly this process of exploratory search and intelligent recommendations based on linked open data. But first, let's recall what exploratory search means. So, this represents usually the activities carried out by searchers who are usually unfamiliar with the domain of their goal. It means they first have to learn about the topic in order to understand how to achieve their goal. So, this is one side of exploratory search. Usually, they are unsure about the way to achieve their goal, either the technology or the process. And also, they are even unsure about their goals in the first place. So, then the search process becomes a more complicated process, an iterative process, a refinement process, and this process is referred to as exploratory search. So, then it comes more to browsing instead of directly pinpoint search. And then also you will be enabled to find something simply by chance, to find something you not have looked for in the first place, but you simply find by chance, which is a seren seren <laughs> sorry, serendipity or serendipitous finding. And if you want to get an overview of a topic, of course, then also you have to do an exploration, exploratory search, or you have to enable content-based navigation within your search process to come up with the goals we have stated here. So this all is exploratory search. This comprises this process of exploratory search, which is, which is an ongoing search topic. And our question here is how can we enable exploratory search based on linked data?
So if we start again with this book from the Earth to the Moon by Jules Verne, of course we can start with the DBpedia page and all the facts and properties that are available for that book. And this is already something because it enables us to give already interesting recommendations and to navigate within the search space. So let's have a look. First of all, what we might find out is um, From the Earth to the Moon is a book. And of course, the book has the author Jules Verne. And we might also find out that the previous work of that Jules Verne has written is In Search of the Castaways, which might al already be my first recommendation. Might not be the best recommendation, but the first we can determine via a direct link. We have even more information which gives us more information about the content of that book, which is here the categorical system. So if you look at the property DC term subject, DCT subject, you see that the book is in a group or in a category which is called 1865 novels or French science fiction novels or novels by Jules Verne or fictional rivalries, novels set in Florida and so on and so on. So these are categories which take care of the content, of course, and also of provenance and stuff like that of exactly this piece or this information, this entity. And of course, they can be used for an educated guest to make an intelligent recommendation. Also, we will find out that Jules Verne has been influenced by, or the other way around, H.G. Wells has been influenced by Jules Verne. Also, we could use this information to say, okay, then books written by H.G. Wells might be interesting for the reader of Jules Verne. So you see there is lots of information which can be used for this kind of exploration. So let's first look at the direct links to other books, which are here, for example, the subsequent work and the previous work too, From the Earth to the Moon. So either I go to the subsequent work, which would be a journey to the center of the Earth, or I go to the previous work, which is In Search of the Castaways. The fact that both of them are also a book, again, emphasizes that this might be a good recommendation for me. Or on the other hand, I find I, I know exactly that uh, From the Earth to the Moon is a book and that it has been written by Jules Verne. And then I might say, okay, probably other books also written by Jules Verne might be a good choice for me as, an, uh, as a recommendation. So I might look at Matthias Sandorf or The Mysterious Island or Master of the World and all these novels that have been written by Jules Verne. And this could be a good starting point for an exploration, although it's not directly connected to our original document, but connected via the author Jules Verne. And I can even go one step further away, so I can look at the author of my original book, and then I look at other authors who have been influenced by my original author. And then I look, of course, what kind of books have they written. So. I look for recommendations which are also books and then, then probably a good recommendation for me would be The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells or The Island of Dr. Moreau or The War of the Worlds. So this could be strategies from direct links over length two hits to length three hits or recommendations. Um, but of course, what you have to do here is to examine in a manual way what do the links mean of linked data. And then you can, for example, try to build a good book recommendation system. And you can build it in a way that you let the user explore what is available there. Uh, for example. So explore, exploratory search and recommender systems, so the limits between both of them is some, are somehow floating. So they are not really fixed. They are both only two sides of the same coin. Okay, let's um, go on with a hands-on example. We can do this by our own. So let's try to recommend books based on Jules Verne's From the Earth to the Moon, but without doing a tedious manual examination of all these properties that are available. Let's work with a general idea which says a recommendation should share as many properties with the base as possible. How do we implement this with DBpedia? Of course, I could somehow restrict this or constrain this general idea and say, okay, I will use all the categories or the classes to which exactly the book belongs and use this information to generate a good recommendation. And as you might have already guessed, we can do this 
in one single Sparkle query, and it's also not a rather complicated Sparkle query. So the most easiest recommender is written in one single Sparkle query, which is as short as this one. So look at that. What are we doing is the following. We select a recommendation and we want to have, of course, our recommendation and we want to have some kind of ranking. I will explain it to you. First, let's have a look at the graph patterns in the Sparkle query. First one is I, I, I select um, what are the classes of which from the Earth to the Moon is part of or is member of. I do this with a graph pattern from the Earth to the Moon is of RDF type category. And then I'm looking for recommendations which are in the same category. And of course it must be a book that I recommend and nothing else. And I filter it in the following way that I say among my recommendations, of course, um, from the Earth to the Moon should not be part of because I know this already. So I simply um, take care that this will not be part of my um, recommendations. What I do next is, of course, for each of the categories of which from the Earth to the Moon belongs to, I group it. So I group by recommendation. So let's say this book is recommended because it shares categories with my original book from the Earth to the Moon. And therefore I group it by recommendation and I count simply all the categories for which it stands. So then I will order it according to this rank. So I count the categories and I rename this uh, variable then as rank and I order it in a descending way by rank, which means the highest rank first, which means the recommendation which shares the most categories with my original book will be in the first place. Sounds quite easy, doesn't it? Okay, so let's go to Sparkle, dbpedia endpoint. So this is exactly the query we were talking about. I click on run and after a few seconds we are finished and you see here we have a list of recommendations. It's a rather long list. And what you see here, the number indicates the number of categories in which both of the books from the Earth to the Moon, as well as these books which are listed here, co-occur. So this is the categories that they share. So In Search of Castaways, for example, shares 32 categories. That's quite a lot. Gottfried Morgan, I don't know that. The Lighthouse at the End of the World, Two Years of Vacations. So this sounds like other Jules Verne uh, uh, novels. So then we have here The Island of Dr. Moreau, that's um, an H.G. Wells uh, novel, or The Last of the Mohicans, that's James Fenimore Cooper. Very interesting. So let's go a bit deeper. Gulliver's Travels, that's Jonathan Swift. So maybe you are interested in something more modern. So for example here you can also read Dune, which has 31 categories. Or also, yeah, that's interesting, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, The Little Prince. But also Tolstoy shares 30 categories with, uh, with, with uh, Jules Verne. So probably they were both born in the 19th century and so on and so on. So that's interesting. Go and explore and of course what you could do, you can extend the Sparkle query in a way, for example, that it gives you an explanation and that it shows you all the 30 categories which they th share. Should be pretty simple and then you see why Anna Karenina is a good recommendation for you. So telling the story why you give this recommendation, quite easy, based on linked data. So let's go back to the presentation and you see here I have also given you the potential result again here also in the slides. Just think about exactly this recommender system. How would you, how would you for example extend it to recommend not books but movies? or to give, let's say, arbitrary recommendations. For this, of course, again, you have to analyze dbpedia and what kind of properties are there. And then you can simply write a small recommender based on one single Sparkle query. And as you have learned in the last lecture last week, you also know how to make a small application out of that. And I hope I will see lots of interesting recommender systems embedded into websites, which make use of exactly this kind of data. So, I hope you have enjoyed the course, which has brought you into the world of linked open data and semantic web technologies. And I hope you will stay tuned until next year, when I try to think of another course. So,
Thanks a lot for your attention and I hope you have enjoyed the course.